Welcome back to the, what is this? The fourth <laughs> Thursday Night Football preview. I'm with all my girlfriends. Full, full squad. Full squad today. All the hoes. Uh, Nick is back. Um, this all week right. we got a good game. A decent game here. Surprisingly. Actually, the last one was pretty good too. Fireworks. Who yeah. would have thought? That was yeah. a surprise. That one we would talk shit about the entire time, but it was a good game. But we Exciting. did call a big game for Sammy Watkins. And we called uh, the, the Rams victory, so I'm, I'm with it. Yeah. Uh, this week we have the Bears at the Packers in Lambeau. Who do we have in this game? Yo, the teams. line is seven, by the way. Two teams coming off wins of different natures. Packers were big favorites at home. Had to come back and survive in overtime. And the Bears were dogged at home yeah. against a, a pretty favored Steelers team coming into the season. And taking them to the brink and beating them in overtime. That's so. actually uh, that's the reason why this line is a seven-point line. Because you have a team in Chicago that was a heavy underdog at home. Come back and win outright against Pittsburgh. And then you got the Packers going into overtime to win. If you look at the advanced line and what the advanced line is... Uh, when the schedule comes out in April, the casinos out in Vegas, they put out the initial lines from weeks 1 to 16. Now, they don't give you a week 17 line because there's a lot of unknown. Team might have clinched. Guys might have gotten hurt. Guys might be resting for the playoffs. So there's no line on those games. But the advanced line was the Packers being a 10-point favorite. So what this is telling you is that there's a big influence to the betting line as far as you know the Bears coming back and beating up. A lot of people think the Steelers are a Super Bowl contender. And the Packers having to go into overtime to beat a Cincinnati team that was 0-2 and no all the turmoil that's yeah. going on. Yeah. So that's why this is a seven point line. Seven and a half at this point. Is it seven and a half now? Yeah, it just got moved like a little bit a little while ago. Jeez. Um, the Bears look really good last week. The Bears on the ground, yeah. The, the Bears look good everywhere. Like Aside I from not, quarterback. Play. Yeah, not in the air, but I I'm just talking about their defense looked really good. They held a potentially high-powered Pittsburgh offense to 17 points, which is pretty damn impressive. Um, and that two-headed backfield of Jordan Howard and Tariq Cohen is probably one of the maybe top five, top five easily, maybe top three running back tandems in the league. So if you're – like I said this last week about the, the Bears. I don't know if they're going to win a lot of games, but they're definitely not going to be easy victories for anybody, especially in an NFC North battle like this. Especially at home. I think they're going to be a better team at home. Chicago, and you look at it. Tim was saying on the podcast how they should have beat the Falcons and they beat Pittsburgh. Both both teams, they played them at home, and then you saw when they went on the road to Tampa Bay, they got shellacked. Mm. So I just feel like I wouldn't overreact too much, but I do think mm. there's a team that you should be careful on some of those lines when they are playing at home. You know, it's interesting about the Packers. Like coming into the season, we all thought that they were the, the problem was their pass defense because last year they ranked 31st after the season, uh, but. Right now they're ranked ninth for for pass and for pass defense, and they're having trouble against the run. Ranked twenty first, and the Bears like to run the ball. And if they're going to feed Jordan Howard like they did last game against the Steelers, that seems to be the recipe for a victory. You should give this guy the ball twenty five fucking times, whatever, twenty eight times. I don't even know how many he had. Uh, if they could run the ball and establish that on the on the Packers, especially in the beginning of the game, maybe force some three and outs, um, it could get interesting. I think one of the big things that we noticed last game was that Mike Daniels was out. and Mike mm -hmm. Daniels really made a name for himself in that week one victory over Seattle. He had been making a name for himself across the league for a really long time. but Well, he got paid this offseason, too. Right. So he's, he's But he was establishing himself as one of the top DTs in the league, and all of a sudden he goes down. And you've seen the Packers, their pass rush has gone down because of it. Their run defense has gone down because of it. So uh, Mike, whether Mike Daniels plays in this game or not is going to be a giant factor in the, in the winner of this game, I think. Yeah, even the Packers to go on the other side of the ball, the offense looked that little out of sync. I know they mentioned it on the broadcast. I think it was Romo who was talking about Randall Cobb being huge being out because everyone yep. their roles for the receivers are switching. Everyone's all over the place. I think they took a penalty for being lined up wrong, and uh, he was harping on that. He was like, you know, Randall Cobb is always in the slot. Like that's their slot guy. Now we got guys like Geronimo. Geronimo. <laughs> he made a fucking play to win. Oh though. yeah, third down play. Anytime I could yell out Geronimo Allison's name. I'm hyped. Go for it. Super Yo, hyped. Yeah, man. You get guys like him. He's lining up outside, inside. So it causes a little miscommunication among the offense. And it showed early in that game against the Bengals. Rare pick six, as we talked about, from Aaron Rodgers, too. Second you know, ever. Second in his career. Yeah, yeah. Brett Favre had 35 of them. 
stats. <laughs> That's one of the most ridiculous, mind-boggling stats I've ever heard in my life. That he he's been playing the league for that long and only has two pick sixes. That is really, really ridiculous. What's like, what's more shocking, the two or the thirty-five? Two, easy. Yeah, the thirty-five. I mean, the thirty-five is a lot, but it's yeah. But if, but if, also Brett Favre, Favre. if I was yeah. to tell you, yo, who's thrown the most pick sixes? Brett Favre would be in your top three answers. Yeah, yeah, probably, probably. yeah. picks yeah. of all time. Yeah, gotta be. yeah. But yeah, but I think thirty-five is is closer to a more reasonable number than two is for a guy who's been yeah, in the year for fourteen insane. years. Two's insane, man. Or however long he's been in, in the league. But the, the the matchup I'm looking for in this game that's really intriguing to me is the Chicago Bears offensive line uh, versus the Packers defensive line. I touched on Mike Daniels missing. Um, that offensive line for the Bears has been fantastic so far, and that's the reason why they're running. And I think if they if they beat the Packers at the point of attack, uh, yes, you have Aaron Rodgers. It's going to be hard to beat Aaron Rodgers at home. I'm no way am I saying the Bears are going to win this game. But the Bears could, again, be a hard team to beat. Uh, if they can control that line of scrimmage, they, if they can run the ball down Green Bay's throat, this game is a completely different game. Yeah, because you got to figure also, I mean, the, the Bengals gave them problems without Eifert. Yeah. That's their second best option. You know what I mean? Like, if, if, they, if they can give them pr- problems in this Bears team who's just coming off a, a win like that. How do, you, how do you guys feel about the Bears' defensive line? Because I think that's the reason why the Bengals gave them trouble. Because they sacked Aaron Rodgers, I believe, six times. And the two tackles that are out for Balaga and uh, Bakhtiari, two, two big X factors for that team, man. Yeah. If you go back a couple of years, they missed the week, week 16 game against the Cardinals in the regular season. It was the ga- it was the year that they met in the playoffs also that we were talking about before on the podcast. And uh, they sacked Aaron Rodgers eight times. So when those two tackles are out, they're in deep trouble. Sunday night football against the Falcons, those two tackles were out. And you saw it. There's something about having the tackles. And, you know, we always talk about Rodgers. Rodgers has a ability that I don't think any other quarterback has where he gets guys blocked. Mm-hmm. And guys on the outside, you know, you want to force them to the outside so you can step up in the pocket. And without those two tackles, I think that's big. That too. TJ Lang also left in the offseason. Yeah. It's like missing three starting line right there. Pretty much from last year. And also, you know, Tim, you're talking about how how good the Bears are at running the ball. What if... You can't run the ball if you're down 14. Yeah, it's it's over. Like that yeah. the the way that the I feel they're sorry. I, yeah, I feel on. they become a little more one dimensional in the sense that Cohen's probably going to be the lead back then because he brings that ability out the backfield. Yeah, without a doubt. I think that the bear the only way for the Bears to stay in this game is to stay in the game. As <laughs> as crazy as that sounds, like there's no way they're coming back. So the only way they have a chance of winning this game is if they stay in the game in or the score game. first. Yeah, they got to score first. That's yeah. what I was saying. You got to force three and outs at the beginning of the game. Hopefully, run the ball and be able to run the ball since they're having trouble with it so far this season. And hopefully, get a you know even if it's like a three point lead, something get out in front because you know Aaron Rodgers is going to score, especially at home. They got to get something going through the air too. I mean, I know you're missing Kevin White and Cam Meredith, but somebody's got to get involved in the pass game. Glennon. He's rightfully on the hot seat, and Trubisky was picked number two overall, and they traded up for him. So I'm sure they're ready to unleash him at any time if, if, he, if he's he, not willing to step up. Yeah, and if he, you, you got to look at the part of the season that you're in right now. You're playing a Thursday night game. If there's ever a time to make a switch, if he shits the bed again this week, you got 10 days until your next game. Long mm-hmm. week practice. And I, I, I think it's coming soon. Yo, no wide receiver quarter pass until the, the five minute mark of the fourth quarter. It's all up to Cohen, Howard, and Zach Miller. And Glennon is, that's not even game managing. That's just playing scared. And if you saw Andy Dalton last week, Andy Dalton played terribly. Like an, another week of him playing really bad. And that that Packers pass defense that you've been talking about, yeah, it, it has been, it has looked impressive. But how much of that was the fact that the Bengals couldn't complete a pass uh, after, the, after the second half? So we, there one play in particular where LaFell came underneath and had nobody near him and Dalton ended up taking a sack on that Romo play. Romo almost lost his mind. Yeah, Romo play. lost his mind. <laughs> we were talking about, yo, it's super fun listening to Tony Romo yeah. speak. He's I love like, watching Andy, that you'll see that in the film room tomorrow and like replay it ten times. Yeah. Like, what the fuck was I looking at? But it, it's things like that that scare me a little bit about the Packers. I'm not that scared about them when they're at home. I think they're going to play well at home. Um, but going forward, that's something that they have to that they have to address because their secondary is still a problem. It is well, much improved from last year, but it's still led by a rookie corner, and it's they still have holes. So if the Green Bay Packers want to be a real Super Bowl contender, they're going to have to address that, or the rookie's going to have to get much better quickly. 
Yo, how many teams do you feel different if they're not at home? Because I feel like there's a lot of teams in the NFL now that if they're not at home, I feel completely different about them. I was going to say, like, one thing that I always forget about in the fr- in the beginning of the year and that I'm always reminded about by week three is how much of an advantage, home field advantage is in the NFL. Right. It doesn't make much sense in terms of X's and O's, but when you look at the human being to aspect, like Nick used to say last year, they, they their whole routine is ruined when they when they have to go on the road. They they don't they get to sleep in their own bed at home, and this all makes a difference. One of my favorite things to pick games and bet on is when recently the last couple of years, and the Patriots started doing this. When a team has back to back games in the West Coast, you know, an East Coast team goes out west, they play back to back games. They'll stay out there. So for 14, 15 days, you're away from your family. That initial week when you come back home, you got a lot of catching up to do. You've been away from the wife, the girlfriend, the family. You know, you got to do this, got to do that, got to do laundry, whatever. It's some, you know, reg- regular shit. And then that week, I find myself picking against that team despite them being at home. And it's been a pretty successful trend the last couple of years. Another successful trend you've been talking about is on Thursday nights. Oh, yeah. What's, what's, the, what's the formula? The Be- head coach. Better head coach, better QB. And if I'm at home, I feel like it's a layup. Last week, actually, I, I would have picked the Niners. Terrible bad beat if you had the Niners. They were a three-point underdog, and you saw how that game ended mm-hmm. by two points. So whoever had the Niners got blessed. Oh. Ter- bad beat if you had the Rams. But that was one of the things. But, you know, you had two new coaches in that situation. And this one, you got Mike McCarthy and John Fox. Like, John Fox, I'd say it's kind of the old John Fox or like Denver and the Panthers. Maybe it's a tie. But the recent John Fox, he's been the head of uh, the, the Bears the last couple of years. And Mike Lennon is. Compared to that to Rodgers, like, come on. Not only that, yeah. not only the head coach, just look at the QB matchup. And it's unanimous sweep yeah. across the board for the Packers. Yeah, it's, this, this team, the, the Bears, though, looking super foxy. <laughs> this is like the the John Fox like dream team, just yeah, solid the mad running back, solid defense. Yeah. That's the that's John Tim, Fox. Tim was day. waiting to drop that. This is I, <laughs> um, no I'm, one has the Bears winning outright. No, I'm uh, confident that this is going to be a game that we're all going to complain about being a shitty Thursday night football <laughs> game because I think it's going to be like 35 nothing, 35 three. I can see that happening as well. I think Green Bay. So is no one's taking the Bears again. So. I mean, it's you're going to pick. It's it's hard enough to pick against Green Bay at home. You're going to pick the Bears. I, on a short week, I'm no not. Less. It's tough. Under the lights, I'm going. <laughs> no. Rodgers and Lambo is almost nah. the shortest. They, they they got the bear. I think the Bears got their big win beating the Steelers. I think this is they, they, this is Green Bay. They got I think that, that game was Bucks also too. more the Steelers than it was the Bears because the Steel, like I don't know what's going on with the Steelers. I mean, we could talk about that at a different time. We're not going to talk about that team. But but that th- at the end of the day, though, the Bears. Are one drop pass away from being two and one and beating the Steelers and the Falcons. That's that's so, something. To, so that's take something them to getting the seven, but nah. at home, <laughs> at home. And what happened on the road? They got smacked by the Bucks, and that, they're going on the road this week. That's why I'm picking the pack. I'm just saying the Bears are going to be a tough out, and I could see this going 35-0, but I could also see this going like twenty to 35-20. I did that backwards. Thirty-five to twenty. I mean, that'd be spill. Wow, the I can't wait to that? watch that on film. <laughs> what was that? We're going to run that on a loop. This one? Yeah. yeah. The waiver wave? That's not that. <laughs> that's the run it back. It's the backward <laughs> score. I just dropped my phone. So I guess I really don't know what that stay was. Stay hot, Tim. This is uh, unanimous Packers. Packers minus seven? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The points, yeah. Yeah. All right. That was easy. Where's, the, you easy know it, Where's you, the easy button? Yeah, you know, we're all this is gonna, we're going to lose now. Yeah, this is not happening. No, this is going to be a blowout. Is this an 80-20 game? No, no. The 80-20 only applies when it's a road favorite. And they're getting oh, 80% gotcha. of the money of the action. Yeah. By the way, the 80-20 last week, if you were on the road favorite, whew, you donated a lot of money to the Las Vegas fund. That's a right. lot of people donated a lot of money. Yeah, a lot of people were coming That's in. That's why the Vegas Bucks, is Vegas. The Bucks were getting 80%. The uh, Dolphins were getting 80%. The Steelers were getting 80%. The Broncos, who Tim lost the bet to, once again. Order has been restored, ladies and gentlemen. Tim lost to me again. <laughs> What's the overall record there? I think he's like 2-7 and seven now. <laughs> but ultimately, he kind of wins because I was I wanted to get to 10-0 oh and, and oh against them and then just stop. But now I think I'm going to have to get to 2-10. and 10. Oh. He, that's what he thinks. Three in a row, he's saying. I'm I'm pulling off a I'm pulling off a ten game winning streak. You, go, you got him right now. You got him right where you want him. Right, right, where, right, right in the palm <laughs> of my hand, right here. Tim always on the losing side has everyone where they want where he wants them. A lot of hope. Listen, though. but when I'm winning, 
Which is very rare. That was year one. Listen, We're listen, in year three listen, of the podcast. I, yeah, d- 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 watch yourself, 4 and 14. All right? But what was the final record, though? 25, 25, 3. They sleep, in, they sleep in on the kid. That's all I'm saying. Nah, we're woke, bro. We're hibernating on the kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, there you have it. <laughs> Packers minus seven. We're all taking the Packers. Um, and that is all. Mm. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs>